like we've been preparing for our whole lives. But it was very sad. I didn't want to go. I love my life. And that sadness really framed in one thought, which is, I only wish for one thing. After the many failures of the previous Juno mission on the part of Mission Control, the Kerbal Space Agency gave the Kerbal Space Center one last opportunity to fix what they had done, with a mission to the as yet unexplored comet slash moon of Minmus. And that is what you are seeing before you now, playing of course at 4 times normal speed. What's going on guys, my name is Bradders, and as you can see we are having ourselves a little mission to Minmus, as I just stated. This is a very simple rocket, and to be honest I probably brought far too much fuel uh, with me for this initial actual transfer stage to Minmus. We have the same crew, the same brave crew that returned from Juna, all but just, and almost lost themselves in Juna and Apollo Juna orbits. We still have Jeb, Bill and Bob, but we have two new people with us. We have two new interns coming along for work experience, so to speak, and they are go by the name of Henbles and Lanwin. As you can see them there, I had to check their names on a little piece of paper that I've written down. But yeah, as you can see, getting into Kerbin orbit was a fairly straightforward procedure because I have far too much Delta V within this launch vehicle. In fact, the whole transfer segment of this this journey, so to say, was rather simple. I mean, we had a few vibrational problems because obviously Lanwin was taking the controls. Lanwin is a Medio, he's a terrible pilot. He's a brilliant human being. He is a, a brilliant Kerbal. He he um, he makes the tea. He's he's, a, he's just a general all-round nice guy, but not much of a pilot, which perhaps might not stand him in good stead later. But as you can see on the end of the spacecraft of this little transfer stage slash lander that we have, you can see that docked onto the side with struts, you can see that we do indeed have a rover to take with us to Minmus. Now this was all because Bill wanted to do a surface study. Unfortunately, Jeb also wanted to do a surface study, and Jeb's a better driver, or at least he thought he was, so they had a drag race. Unfortunately, Bill lost that one, or Bob, or whoever. I get Bill and Bob confused, okay? But, and Jeb ended up winning, and that's pretty much all that matters. And so Jeb will be the one, if we land successfully, to take the rover for a spin and do a surface study of Minmus, which will, of course, take a very long time. But you can see here, we're getting our transfer ready. We've got our encounter with Minmus. We're just tweaking it ever so slightly to make sure that we arrive within the right plane. You can see Kerbin falling away behind us as we tumble out from its orbit. I love those massive solar panels. I had them on the Juno transfer stage as well. They look rather cool, I think. So we're coming up on the maneuver now. It's only a very small burn. We've still got part of the launch vehicle with us, which is that big orange tank stage that you can see. Uh, we end up ditching that a little bit early just for maneuver's sake because, well, as you can see, it hasn't got any SAS modules on it and those fins don't really do anything. So we end up ditching it once we get in minimum sphere of influence like we just have here. Uh, we're stopping ourselves, putting ourselves into a low altitude orbit. As you can see, I'm just tweaking it so we can get about 9 kilometers above the surface. And of course, above one of the great lakes of Minmus, because as we all know, the Minmus lakes are exactly sea level on Minmus, which means your radar altimeter for once on the outside of your spacecraft actually gives a correct reading, which, trust me, is so much of a godsend. So you can see here, I get captured into orbit using the last of the fuel in the launch stage. We still had loads of fuel left in that, to be honest, and we probably could have uh, used it more than we perhaps could have. We perhaps did, so there we see, ditching it, taking a screenshot, obviously, because that's what you do when you have stage separation. And so we activate the skipper engine, which will be our descent engine. 
uh, for the majority of the descent, and then we shall switch over to the lander's engine, seeing as we have far too much fuel. And so you can see here, we're just going to make ourselves into a circular orbit. I am remembering to quick save this time as well. If you remember the Juna mission, I managed to quick save in all the wrong places. Hence why I ended up getting in a polar orbit, which was retrograde relative to my potential target. So you can see me here now playing around with maneuver nodes, trying to make sure that I land on one of the lake beds, just to give myself a sort of general idea as to the delta V stats. And it turns out it is only around 19.2 meters per second. And we basically get ourselves into the right orientation so that the, the rover lands with wheels down. Not that that's going to make much of a difference, bearing in mind I have landing legs on this thing. But we are about to come down now. We're just going to deorbit and we're going to... There we go, boom. Have them. And we're going to deploy the legs, like so. And we're going to come down. We're obviously going to have to start pointing on our retrograde marker, because otherwise we're going to start going in the wrong direction. Now, the original place I wanted to land wasn't exactly perfect, and as you can see here, Landming has once again got us into trouble with his piloting skills, as he was almost about to crash us into the top of a mountain, and that would not have been good. So, of course, Henbles has to come in to the rescue. He is a much better pilot, but for the few days he's actually been here, he's actually been a bit of an arsehole to the crew. Thankfully, Henbles knows a lot about piloting, and he is a very experienced piloter. So he manages to put the craft down within one of the smaller lake beds. Of course, he has been studying Minmus and the orbital mechanics of Minmus incredibly closely over the past couple of days, and so he knows exactly how to manipulate the low gravity and get ourselves back onto a correct trajectory, so to speak. You can see here we've now ditched the skipper engine just for control, fine control sake. You can see ourselves coming down, and bearing in mind this is at four times normal speed, you can probably imagine just how long this took. We can now see the explosions, however, of that spent skipper stage. This land is rather an interesting design, I think. It's got sort of... It's got sort of four little tanks, four li little tanks to connected to even smaller tanks, which are connected to the big tank. It's rather elaborate, but it does allow for a lot more fuel. Now, you can see here we're starting to wobble a little bit. Now, this was because Len Ming decided to wrestle the controls away. He decided that this was his moment of glory. He wanted to be the first person to actually touch down a landing module on the surface of Minmus. Hence why we are rocking backwards and forwards, and our lateral speed is actually quite high. Noticing we are about to touch down upon a rather steep slope just shy of the lake bed, um, Len Ming decides to quickly abort and skip across the surface, unaware that he will not be able to kill his lateral velocity because he is so low. Never mind, he tries to correct his vertical velocity just to try and get himself, get him down, and um, get the crew down as quickly as possible, and you can see him hovering over the surface, desperately wrestling. But as I said, Len Ming is no pilot, and eventually... Yeah. He tries desperately to get away, but that happens. So yeah, that was my landing on Minmus. It wasn't exactly the best landing, but we deployed the rover nonetheless, and now it's Jeb's turn to have some fun. We're just going to check that it works, check the awesome lights work, and of course, we didn't actually get the drive system quite figured out before we left Kerbin. We have to unlock this, we have to lock the steering, and we have to um, stop the motors in order to get this rover to function properly. It is a front wheel drive, front wheel steer sort of rover. It is a, it is a Ford Fiesta of um, of interplanetary travel, and those solar panels were completely stupid, as I found out, because then they're a bit useless, to be fair. But nevertheless, it works. We also have an RCS system, more for emergency braking, because pressing the brakes usually causes the rover to flip end over end. So we have an RCS system to slow us down, which you'll see here. And it's actually a lot more effective than the brakes. So obviously Jeb is going to be the first person, and he forgets to put the handbrake on. Uh, which is always a fun thing to happen. Uh, but nevertheless, he will plant a flag. Um describing how they got here and how Len Ming stupidly crashed their their vehicle and how they may not get back. 
This lander could probably get back to Kerbin with the amount of fuel it's got, however it doesn't have any parachutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to send a second, we're going to send a second craft um, while these guys wait on the surface as it will only be a few days um, wait for them. And so we're going to send a second craft. The only problem is, is that craft will not have enough room for all Kerbals. Um, we were thinking one could hang onto the side as we could think we thought we may be able to dock this lander back up But due to it being compromised by the crash and lending It's going to be a bit impossible So obviously Bill now gets out of here He's going to plant a subscriber flag to tell us how many subscribers this is now a a customary tra tradition to plant two flags of happiness upon the surface and well, we have put one with the subscribe count, one with a little message on. So here we have, I think it's 290. Obviously that has gone up because I did film this about three days ago. Now, Bill's having a few troubles with the new EVA system. What he's trying to do is correct Lenming's mistake here by, by I don't know, trying to thrust upwards. But all he's doing is giving himself a brain hemorrhage. Um, he's also breaking many bones in the process. Of course, Lenming is distraught by this fact. He thinks that they are all going to die on the surface of Minmus and that it will all be his fault. Handballs, however, has the genius to try the oldest trick in the Kerbal book, the dancing leg dance, uh, to try and get their craft righted. Now, as you can see, it is having some sort of effect in that we are now moving. However, it needs a little bit of an extra kick. So Handballs decides that the best thing to do is to do the leg dance while also using the engine, as I believe you will see in but a second. Right now, though, we are just dancing aimlessly over the surface. I think we will start using the engine in but a moment. This was Handballs pondering, thinking for a moment, thinking, what could he do? And see, he begins to uh, get ourselves righted with the leg dance and this is all rather comical and so here you can see we start to use the engine Hamble's clearly using his piloting genius to get themselves righted with just enough momentum to do a 720 backflip and go on all four of the landing gear and thus get himself righted and so he obviously starts showing off to Lenming about this saying oh it's not that hard and of course Lenming doesn't feel very good about this he feels quite I don't know, quite quite deflated. I, I certainly feel that deflated. But Jeb is unaware of these troubles um, back at home base. For now, he has a surface study, which he rightly won the right to do, to actually carry out. And so using a little bit of the RCS system, we drive out into the into the sea of Minmus, the frozen mint ice cream scoop that is in space. Obviously, I forgot to add the mod which adds the IVA view to the Mark, view, Mark II cockpit, but oh well. I, I, I honestly wish I should have added that mod in hindsight, really, because it really does look nice. It's a really nice interior. So yes, Jeb is going to be driving around five kilometers away from the uh, Tranquility Base. I don't want to call it Tranquility Base because that's what Apollo 11 called their... Um, called their lunar module site. I really don't want to call it that, but oh, oh god, Jib's gonna crash into a- oh of course, they haven't added park clipping yet. But of course, it is fine because we pretend we didn't hit that rock and it was but an, an, an anomaly, an anomaly within the, the, uh, the Minmus surface. One that we perhaps will have to investigate further on a, on a future mission. But for now, we're driving. As you could probably see when I was steering around those rocks, you could probably see that this rover doesn't exactly handle the best at speed. Um, it does sort of tip topple over, and so you do kind of have to use the SAS to, um, to correct it. But it's kind of hard, bearing in mind that in order for this thing to function in the first place, you have to disable the torque within the capsule in order to get it to function 100% as it should. So I believe we're coming up on five kilometers now. Um, this thing does drive like an absolute pig, but bearing in mind that we have no atmosphere on Minmus, it's just a really quick thing because you can basically just accelerate forever and you can, once you get up to a speed of about 13 meters per second, you basically go at that speed forever. Like you may you lose 0.1 of a, a meter per second per say, I don't know, few hundred, like, 
few hundred kilometers or something, but in the long scheme of things, it's really not going to matter all that much. It's only really caused by the friction of the wheels against the surface. But as you can see, we have arrived. And so Jeb gets out to do his surface study. And so, of course, plant a flag five kilometers away. And so you can see the Minma Surface Survey. I can't exactly know what that says because my preview is too small for me to actually read that. But you can hear old me furiously tapping on the keyboard. Now, of course, Jebler does all important science before getting back in his capsule and beginning the long drive home. Of course, we are going back to the base just to make double check um, the science survey, the surface survey at Tranquility Base because, of course, Bill wanted to get in on the action. Bill or Bob or whoever won the drag race. I can't remember who it was. Uh, that's probably why this is probably my last chance to actually um, get a mission right or at least return some Kerbals and some science home safely without having them have a, a, a scare, shall we say. Um... Well, they've kind of already had one scare, haven't they? I mean, the uh, the landing wasn't exactly brilliant. Speaking of the landing, they have just found out that they will not be able to dock the lander on there, and that one Kerbal, unfortunately, will have to be left behind. Due to their contracts with the KSC, Jeb, Bill, and Bob will not be left to die on the surface of Minmus, because they are needed for important tests testing of new silly craft that will not work properly and well that basically means that one of the interns because they are cheap will have to remain on Kerbin on Kerbin on Minmus for all eternity we could send a rescue mission for them but chances are we won't have the funds for that so this is the decision that I want you guys to make we have handballs, an excellent pilot, a truly excellent pilot who would perhaps one day rival Jebediah in terms of his awesomeness and just simple badassness. Um, but he's a rather arrogant Kerbal, shall we say. He's not exactly the nicest person. You wouldn't really want to spend an entire interplanetary mission with him because he's like the big I am and he has an ego. Unfortunately, um... I don't like him, personally. And we do a flip in the rover. We were so close to home. And of course, we lose a few solar panels and some batteries along the way. That wasn't exactly Jeb's finest moment, but he pulls it back by turning on the torque. On the flip side, coming back to my points, we have Landballs, or Lanwin, sorry. We have Lanwin Kerman, who is just an excellent all-round guy. He is a great motivational speaker, and he will keep everyone motivated. Um, unfortunately, though, he isn't much of a pilot, and I'd say he's a rather... He's not a very experienced Kerbernaut, shall we say. But this is what I want you guys to decide for the next episode. Only three, only four Kerbals can come home, and we currently have five on Minmus. So who do you want me to save? Lanball, Lanwin, or Henbles? Do say in the comments section down below, as they wait, await their fate from the KSC. Both of them, you can feel the nerves within their, uh, within their system. And the three advanced Kerbonauts get together on the surface of Minmus to discuss their fate with Mission Control. What will happen? find out on the next episode of KSP Missions. Thanks for watching, remember to subscribe, peace out.